So is the debate over mandatory vaccines emerging as a major wedge issue in the federal election campaign? Well, look, there is a small but loud anti-vaxxer movement, and it's pushed its way onto the campaign, uh, forcing Justin Trudeau, for an example, to cancel an event due to security reasons. Check this out. Now, all parties are condemning this kind of vitriol, but Mr. Trudeau is pressing the vaccine issue on certificates. He's now promised a billion dollars to help the provinces and territories with their so-called vaccine passports. So if your premier, wherever you are across the country, if your premier mandates that everyone in your local restaurant or gym or other non-essential locations must be fully vaccinated and show proof, we'll pay for the development and rollout of that program. So vaccines and health care are fundamental issues on the election. The Conservatives plan to increase the Canadian health transfer by 6% annually, reversing a formula that Stephen Harper passed and that the Liberals continued. But Aaron O'Toole also promises to have more private-public synergies within the universal access mandate. If Saskatchewan, Alberta, Ontario or Quebec want to innovate to provide better health care, I support that. Why? because it gives Canadians more choice. The more choices Canadians have in health care, the better. Meanwhile, the NDP is promising universal pharmacare by 2022, but there are no details as to how they would do it. So how will vaccines shape the rest of the campaign? And would Canada's universal health care system be under threat with more private public synergies? Well, let's find out. Joining me now are Liberal candidate Jennifer O'Connell, Conservative candidate Eric Duncan, and NDP candidate Claire Haxel. Good morning to everybody. Uh, Ms. O'Connell, I'll start with you. The Liberals are promising this billion dollars to help provinces with these vaccine certificates or passport. What are the details there in terms of personal privacy, what they can be used for, consistency? How would that money well, be used? Well, I think the point of uh, providing these funding is to help support provinces and territories with their plans. As we know, not every single province and territory has released their plans. Some are moving far ahead. So I think we want to be flexible to ensure that provinces and territories are not avoiding the mandatory vaccinations or vaccine certification due to a lack of ability to implement. That's where we want to be there to help support them and whatever they need because we want our community safe we want our kids to go back to school in a safe way we want to be able to travel again so if the federal government and if our liberal government's re-elected we want to make sure provinces and territories have everything they need to provide those tools to keep so, our community safe uh, mr duncan the conservatives are not looking to enforce mandatory uh, vaccine vaccines even for your own candidates that's been an issue but does the cpc support mandatory vaccine passports as a way of keeping the economy going we understand even provinces like ontario are, are might be changing their tune on that after resisting them what's your party's position on certificates and the use of them so uh, on certificates evan as we have done throughout the campaign and as we've done throughout the whole COVID pandemic, is that the jurisdiction of the provinces to determine restrictions uh, and safety measures province by province. We'll continue to do that. And as always, we have a good working relationship with the provinces. That will be no different on that. Evan, I want to talk about mandatory vaccines as well, to your point on that. We spoke on this program before about that, and we've been very clear that although it's individual choice on there, there's a lot of things the federal government can do from a leadership role when it comes to, for example, uh, testing in workplaces of keeping our workplaces, our offices safe as well. Ms. Hagsel, what, what should happen to those people who refuse to be vaccinated? I know NDP leader Jagmeet Singh, who was on this program earlier, said discipline may be necessary uh, firing employees. But in your view, what's your party's position on the certificates and how to enforce them? Yeah, absolutely. Look, here's the thing. 76% of Canadians approve of a national vaccine passport. And, you know, this is a classic example of the Liberals, Justin Trudeau and O'Toole, you know, just talking around in circles when we what we really need is national leadership. People need to have national standards, especially when they travel between provinces. And just as you pointed out, leaving the country and traveling overseas, you have to show a vaccine passport to come into Canada. We should be giving Canadians that same passport so that they can go and travel overseas. And it's very frustrating to see that, you know, Trudeau is only now coming out with this 
you know, support for a vaccine passport, when the truth is, you know, vaccines started becoming available in January. He's had nine months to do this. Okay, it is provincial jurisdiction. Let me just quickly go to the, the health care issue. And I'll, I'll start with you, Mr. Duncan, because this has been an issue for your campaign on the private health care options. Mr. O'Toole has said he wants more public private partnerships. He's still promising to protect universal access. But I spoke to the president of the Canadian Medical Association, Dr. Smart. She didn't buy that. She says this is actually a step towards a bigger two-tier healthcare system. I just want to show you what she said when I asked. I think that is one step towards a two-tier healthcare system. And what we know from other countries that have gone in that direction, ultimately what it does create is two standards of healthcare, one for people who can pay and one for people who can't. But you can't have both ways. It's just, a, in her mind, a slippery slope towards more two-tier health care. What, what's your response to the CMA? That's absolutely incorrect. That's the first I've just seen that clip. But Evan, uh, on the situation, universal public access to health care is a Canadian, part of our Canadian identity. It's part of our characteristic and the backbone of our country and our health care system. That won't change. Every Canadian uses a health card to get services in this country. And under an Aaron O'Toole government, that will absolutely be the case. I'll just mention the hypocrisy here. I've been given an example for Canadians to understand the context of this. Vaccinations, which we just talked about. Pharmacies, local pharmacies, thousands across this country, including where the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister got their vaccines from, were done at a private right. pharmacy. There is a room, that's what we're talking about there, is partnering with places like that and doing that. So. It is fear mongering to suggest a two tier system or a user pay or anything yeah. along those lines. That is not the case. Miss O'Connell, you can, you can uh, push back. I just want to say, I know that transfer reverses the Stephen Harper federal transfer cut that the, not cut, reduction from 6% Correct. Uh, Correct. that the Liberals accepted. Miss O'Connell, um, what do you say about that? Well, I mean, clearly the Conservatives are talking out of both sides of their mouths because the, Mr. O'Toole has even said that he would not enforce the Canada Health Act against provinces and territories who created the two-tier system. So they're trying to tell Canadians today that they're going to uphold our universal health care while at the same time providing the opportunities for provinces and territories to create a system that allows for those who can afford to pay to skip in line ahead of the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And that's precisely what the CMA but, 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 but is what afraid the, of and talking about. But what did the Liberal government the do over system. six years, just to be fair? For six years, there was private health operators and, for example, MRIs and diagnostics in Quebec. I, don't, I didn't see you claw back uh, on the, your government claw back on that. Like, why suddenly now and not over six years? Well, it's not suddenly now. We have been talking about these issues. We have been acting. I remember even our first uh, budget and our investments in healthcare were really specific to targeted needs. We were working with provinces and territories to make sure the universality of our healthcare system. And in contrast to the Conservatives, we're investing to eliminate wait lists, $10 billion. We're investing to have more doctors and nurses and nurse right. practitioners. Well, Conservatives want to create a system where those who can afford it get the access and the rest of us oh. are left out in the cold. Dirt. I know, uh, Ms. Haxall, I know you're shaking your head there, so I want to get to you. But could you also answer what would the NDP do, for example, about private clinics in Quebec, like the diagnostics, that they have a 2005 Truly decision that actually says they can do that. Uh, would, would an NDP government shut those down? Well, I think we have to be enforcing the Canada Health Act across the country, but I think it's very rich to hear from the Liberals saying that the Conservatives are the ones who are trying to privatize health care when it's the Trudeau and the Liberals and the Conservatives who teamed up to vote against taking profit out of long-term care. We live in a country where you can work your entire life, pay taxes, contribute, and when you hit and participate in the public health care system, and then when you hit a certain age, you're forced to go into a private health care system that has taxpayer dollars, but their interest is profit, not quality. Okay, I've got to leave it there. I think health care is obviously a big issue on the trail. I also want to thank you all not for not even interrupting each other very much. This is a, <laughs> this is a, a real welcome thing, but we, we heard all your positions and I really appreciate airing them out. Okay, Jennifer O'Connell, Eric uh, Duncan, and Claire Haxel, appreciate uh, all three candidates joining us.